exclusive. Anti-corruption war will only impress me when Sheyi Tinubu is arrested. David Ondeni says. Good day, my people. This is the news for this morning. Make you listen to the news in full. In this exclusive interview with Dokei's World, investigative journalist David Ondeni speaks about matters relating to the state of the nation, particularly President Bola Hamed Tinubu's one year in office, his expectations and forecasts about the administration's performance. He also spoke on the chances of success of an opposition political movement and the need to tackle the matter of violence that impedes the viability of such movements. In this interview, Ondeni addresses the economic and anti-corruption mission of the government and the need for media literacy in Nigeria. He also touches on some issues of the day leading the controversial coastal highway from Lagos to, to Calabar. Speaking with Doke's world journalist, Amadin Obewe, David had this to say. Last month made it exactly one year since Bola Ahmed Tinobu became the president of Nigeria and was sworn in. One year later, what is your assessment? Did you expect everything that is currently happening? And he said, I didn't just expect it. I used data to project a lot of these things that have happened. I said, for example, multiple times that the sole purpose of Tinobu's presidency would be for the benefit of Tinobu the man, Tinobu the family, and the wider political and economic organization he has built around him, he has built around him over the years. That would be the sole animating purpose of a Tinubu presidency. Unlike any other president in history, an attempt was made to at least pretend that there was some sort of governance going on in some kind of national interest. If that wasn't always the case, but at least the pretense was made. In that case, in this case, there will be no pretense. I said that multiple times, and I think the past one year has borne me out of this. Before he even settled down in office, he didn't take up to a month. His very first policy decision had to do with the unholy arrangement that is going on now between Oando, which, as you know, is owned by his nephew. Essentially, Oando has become a sort of de facto NNPC in a deal that restructures in a way that no one is really quite sure how that came about. But that's just what it is now. So essentially, the Tinubu family is now at the vanguard of the Nigerian energy industry and NNPC has been con and NNPC has been cornered by one family effectively, which is without precedent in Nigeria history. Nowadays everything has to go through some third party which has some sort of link to Tinubu. With people are expecting governance in the midst of all of this, good luck to them because they are not going to get it. That's exactly what has happened as the security situation improves, no. In some instances, it has actually worsened. As the economic, situa- economic situation improved, it has worsened significantly. Buari's years are now looking like the good old days. The short to medium, medium-term medium outlook. How does it look? The stampede of investors running for the exit to get out of Nigeria tells a story on its own. Most recently, we saw this story about Ames supposedly was going to invest $600 million into Nigeria and he went to town with it and did the old song and dance about global shipping giant investing dollars into Nigeria, which supposedly was meant to reflect well on the economic policy, only for Mex to come out themselves to essentially come out and say, we don't know what you are talking about, this never happened, this is fake news, and this is not the first time things like that have happened, even in diplomatic space. They have multiple incidents like that on the UAE lifting of on the UAE lifting of visa ban. Everyone was happy only for the UAE to come out and say no, no such thing happened and no such engagement has taken place. As we speak, the visa ban is still in effect almost a year since they went to social media and made joyfully noise out of the announcement. This is what a Tinubu presidency was always going to be. So there's absolutely nothing surprising. I'm not disappointed because it's exactly what I expected.
what is it like at this point in time still trying to make a difference while not being in the country and seeing all that is happening regardless of where you happen to be geographically nowadays one still has an opportunity to make a change because internet access is all, almost a bit creatures anywhere in africa so gone are the days when you had to be on ground before you had a voice or you could get things done just by having a twitter account it's possible to get things done nowadays so i don't feel as if i'm upset per se however i do consider especially as time goes on and as the bad actors in the system continue to entrench themselves further the question does sort of come up a couple of times in one's mind what exactly is the point of all this but i guess how i rationalize it in my head is that well someone has to do it and that's just the way it is when you claim to be fighting for a bigger cost than you i guess one of the conditions that comes with it is that is you have to accept that what you are fighting for might not even materialize in your lifetime might be for the sake of your children that you are doing it but you won't say that because it's not happening in front of you then that means you are going to just give up and walk away and this is was the interview with david on Dane. who happens to be an investigative journalist don't forget to like this video comment under this video and subscribe to this channel to get more news from this channel